everybody, Susie Q here, and welcome to Q Aquatics and Exotics. Today, we're going to be taking a walk on the exotic side a little bit <laughs> to check out my crested geckos. But this is a male and female crested gecko that I have, and I want to show you, I want to talk a little bit about what a crested gecko is and their bioactive enclosure that they're in. So I did set up this terrarium and posted, I'm going to put a link to that coming across the top for this terrarium because it's very similar in many ways to setting up an aquarium where I set it up, I put in the plants, I have to get it ready, I got to build up the, let's say the, the cultures inside and in this case was the isopods and springtails and make sure the plants take and get it ready. And once I have a thriving environment, then I was ready to put in my crested geckos. So let me talk a little bit about the crested gecko. They're from New Caledonia and they were thought to be extinct for quite some time. Um, and that's in between like Fiji and Australia. And I'm very happy that they're not extinct and they're pretty easy to breed. So they're, they're well bred in the hobby. They're pretty easy to find. Corolophus ciliatus. So that's the crested ghetto. They are so adorable. And they're the crested geckos because of their top little diamond-like shape head. The crest. Some have a bigger crest than others. These guys are arboreal, which means they like to climb trees. So their tank is more of an up and down than a long ways. Ideally, if I had a 20-gallon long, I would put it up on end build myself a front door and that would be their enclosure because I do have 20 gallon longs but I don't have any so I, I got these on sale these are two different ones one's Exoterra and one's Azilla one has one door opening and this has two doors opening but they're very similar in size 12 by 12 by 18 not ideal I want to get an 18 by 18 by 24 because I'm gonna breed these guys in a couple years. So this is Dixie, my female, and this is Bixley, my male. Thought to believe that they're crepuscular, which means they're very active at dusk and dawn, which as soon as my lights go out in the fish room, they're moving around, they're active. Um, I don't handle them a lot unless I need to, only because they, they love to jump. That's what their thing is, is they jump, they're, they're paws are so sticky they stick to the side of the glass sometimes they're upside down they'd have to be to be arboreal so only because I don't want them to hurt when I do pick them up for for whatever reason I might I keep my I keep my hands inside inside the enclosure I'm just not that comfortable but I did get some good shots I think of how adorable they are there's all different morphs and these guys can live between 15 and 20 years right now Dixie is about two years old and Bixley is three. So they're pretty young. They're not quite mature enough to start breeding, but he is, you can physically see he's a male and she's a female. And like I said, they're arboreal creatures. They hang upside down a lot and eat. So in these little pre-made um, leaves, they're like a ceramic leaf is where I put their food so they can hang upside down and eat their food. These guys eat anything from Pangea, Rapashi, insects. And they get a little bit of all of that. I don't have water bowls in here per se, but I miss their tanks twice a day. And this little leaf fills up with water so they can lick the water off of there. They'll lick the water off the leaves. Now the thing about these, sometimes their nickname is frog butt because they can drop their tail. Um, they'll drop their tail so their tail remains behind wiggling, so whatever prey is going to get them would attack that, their tail and they get away. The thing about these guys is they don't grow back again once they've dropped it. So they got like a cute little frog butt. So don't be shaming if you see a frog butt. They're just adorable. Um, I also put in here flightless fruit flies because they'll eat them. So they do like the Rapashi and the Pangea is like a powdery mix gel food that when mixed up, I get it to like the consistency of baby food. Um, I do have a UVB light on these guys, although it's kind of like controversial that they don't need it, but I got the UVB on. So during the day, this fish room is about 78, 80 degrees. Whew. So 
So that's perfect for them. So I don't need a heater or a heat lamp in here. And at night, it can get down to um, anywhere between 60 and 70 is fine for them. So they're kind of easy that way is that they don't need the heat lamp. Well, mine don't need a heat lamp because my house, this room doesn't get that cold um, because of all the other UVB and lights that I have going on in here and the heated water. It keeps this a pretty high temperature and the humidity in this room is about 50 percent so their humidity should be between 50 and 70 percent which is perfect this room regular is at 50 percent which is why i miss their tank twice a day at least twice a day sometimes more because not only for their benefit i'm also cultivating a lot of the plants in here and inside here these are bioactive enclosures so i have the isopods and the springtails growing in here as well and the springtails will eat the mold and the mildew if there's any buildup in there. Oh, that's dirty. I should have cleaned the glass first. My bad. In these active enclosures, they're built up on like a false bottom. Because I'm misting them twice a day, if it gets too filled with liquid, I can stick my hose in there, like a little tiny air hose. But I use it to drain out the water if it gets too much. So far, it hasn't gotten too much. This one is the first one I built with a lot of um a spider wood and just like in your aquarium it goes to that phase of having a little extra that like bacteria or algae grown all over it but once you grow past that it's perfect and the springtails loved it so before i put my animals in there i let the both of the terrariums grow and get seasoned first and sometimes that's hard because you want to go out and get the you know you got the tank set up just like your fish tank you got a fish tank set up you want to throw a fish in there but you got to wait. You got to wait. If there's an easier, faster way to do it, I don't know of it. I just waited and watched the springtails start to multiply. Um, the, the isopods start to do their thing. I kept misting down the, the plant. I actually even put in poop from other tanks in here just to make sure they were getting whatever it is that they get from the detritus. Is it detritus or poop? I don't know. I just like saying detritus better, but it's poop. Now, Dixie is much redder. She's like a cinnamon, fiery red. And Bixley is more of a pale brown with white spots on his tail. They both still have their tails. And then I'm going to show you the babies. The babies are in a smaller enclosure. It's a little 12 by 12. Because that's what I had set up, bioactive, ready to roll. But they're each going to go into their own enclosure. Since I can't tell if they're male or female. I don't know how long I'd be able to house them together. So I'll probably, and they don't hang out together. They're, they don't, they're not like the turtles and hang on top of each other or anything like that. I, I mean, they coexist just fine. They share the food bowl fine, but I think I'm gonna set them up in their own enclosure as soon as I have one more shelf to set up. Two more 40 gallons to go downstairs. So it's an evolution, it's a process. It's just constantly growing. So thanks for coming along with and checking out my crested geckos with me. What do you think? They are adorable guys. Let me know if you have crested geckos in the comments below. And if you do anything different with them, I'd love to hear about them. Thanks for checking it out. I'll see you next time.